always happening guys it's your boy tc back with another video so the transfer window is just closed for the summer and that's for premier league clubs in terms of conducting business domestically of course we know that the european window is certainly still open so we can expect some outgoings which we will certainly be discussing within this video but we're going to talk about the incomings within Arsenal. So we know that we signed five players that will certainly be most likely be featuring for the first team this season. And let's start from the back. So, of course, for years we've been crying out for goalkeeper. Unfortunately, when Petr Cech came in, that didn't nullify the issue. Uh, of course, he did make some key mistakes last season, uh, namely when we went over to Swansea. That's just one example. And uh, I wasn't really pleased with how he performed overall last season. Of course, it was a bad season for the whole team. We ended up finishing uh, outside of the top four and uh, we find ourselves within the Europa League yet again. But we've made some significant additions. The key areas that needed to be addressed have certainly been addressed. So let's, as I said, let's start from the back. Uh, of course, we've brought in uh, Lerno, uh, who's the goalkeeper, and he joined this summer. He joined quite early on, really, but he didn't join the squad um, up until later on into the pre-season. But I do believe Unai Emery has obviously identified this area as a key area that needed strengthening and the goalkeeper was certainly needed. Will Lerner go straight into the first team? I'd like to think so. Of course, we've seen good things from Petr Cech during the preseason, but I don't believe the manager is going to go out and purchase a goalkeeper and actually use him as a substitute goalkeeper or reserve goalkeeper, if you like. I do believe Lerner will be coming in straight into the first team and he will certainly be addressing the issues that we have experienced recently uh, within the goalkeeping department. Is he going to hit the ground running? I hope so. Of course, it takes players some time to actually settle down and actually get used used to playing with their new teammates but the addition of Lerno to the team has certainly been uh, satisfying for me personally really and a lot of fans really have been voicing uh, this satisfaction based on the addition of Lerno to the team. So let's talk about uh, Socrates who was a new central defender that was added. Of course again defensively we needed some new players to come in however I personally don't believe Socrates will fully address the issue. We did see some niggles here and there uh, during pre-season in particular against Chelsea when we played them in Dublin. We kept seeing similar mistakes or similar areas. Of course, we were still working them out during pre-season. And I understand that Unai Emery's assistant, uh, Juan Carlos, has certainly been working with the team uh, during pre-season to actually address these defensive concerns. But it looked to me as if Socrates was a bit slow. Of course, this was only during pre-season. Uh, also, let's not forget that he's also 29 years old. He seems like a solid commanding defender. But what I'm concerned about really is if we come against a team that has a lot of pace up top, which is a number of teams within the Premier League, we may suffer based on that. Of course, his potential defensive partner in the form of Mustafi uh, is in the quickest of, uh, of defenders. He is also full of mistakes. And um, again, I'm not too sure if this will address it, but Socrates came in from Dortmund. Again, fantastic, fantastic addition in terms of addressing that particular issue. Was it addressed well? I'm not too sure. We'll certainly have to wait and see. Moving on to the right-back position, we obviously brought in the experienced Lichtenstein who came in on a free from Juventus. Uh, he has seemed okay during the preseason. Is he going to take the starting spot from Hector Bellerin? I don't think so. But I do believe Hector Bellerin moving forward will learn a lot from Lichtenstein. Of course, he's an experienced veteran. Has played a number of games throughout his whole career. Has played at a very high level as well, pretty much throughout his whole career. And in my own opinion, I do believe Hector Bellerin will learn a lot from him. As well as the fact that it will provide cover for Bellerin and as well as competition within that position we may see him have a good three four five games which might freeze out Bellerin out of the team but I do believe uh, he is again a fantastic cover we didn't really have cover in that position of course there's still the matter of Carl Jenkinson which we will be talking about uh, shortly so that's the other addition that came in as part of the defense in midfield uh, we saw the youngster uh, Gunduzi who came in for a very very minimal fee but he's looked absolutely fantastic in pre-season. Can he emulate his pre-season form into the new season? It's yet to be seen, but he looks a real prospect. It looks extremely, extremely exciting. And for the fee that we paid for him, I think we will end up looking back at this transfer and actually considering it a huge, huge bargain. I can't see him really not being able to contribute within the first team. Uh, I'm going to be doing my Man City preview as well after this video. And I do believe he will be featuring against Man City due to a one or two injuries that we may have in the team. But 
Gunduzi, fantastic, fantastic prospect, as well as the fact that we bought in Lucas Torreira. So Lucas Torreira is, um, again, very, very highly rated, only 22 years old, played absolutely magnificently well at the World Cup. Shout out Ronaldo. When Uruguay played against Portugal in the World Cup, it looked absolutely amazing. His numbers and stats from Syria were absolutely fantastic. And again, that player as well can be considered a steal or a bargain. Uh, of course, the club ended up spending roughly around £68 million on transfers. Of course, we've had outgoings, which have totaled to about £14 million. So that £50 million, that rumoured £50 million, pound to me has turned out to be true of course it was all speculation to begin with but we've ended up conducting business in roughly about 51 52 million pounds and it's absolutely astonishing is this going to be the uh, the sort of level that we're going to be operating on moving forward if this is the case then <laughs> we're going to be in extremely a lot of trouble moving forward but it seems as if Unai Emery is putting together a nice squad adding to what assets that he had available when he arrived but I'm extremely uh, pleased with the incomings just one note to take away from all of this is uh, we could have bought in a winger but what that might mean is Unai Emery may have faith in the youngsters that are available to play in those positions in the in the wings and that would be uh, Reese Nelson as well as Edin Katia so this will certainly be a big huge season for these youngsters I'm sure that they will be featuring uh, within the first team of course we've got a number of competitions that we will be taking part in and let's talk about some outgoings at this point now so we did see Callum Chambers John Fulham on loan which was a puzzling move really because he's left us short in defence in my personal opinion of course Koscielny is still out but we do have Mavropanos as well as Holding uh, who can play centrally uh, in defence uh, we also saw uh, David Ospina leaving for Besiktas in Turkey and that was for a very minimal fee. We also saw Lucas Perez joining West Ham for again another minimal fee. Uh, we did see uh, the likes of Tuba Akpom leaving as well going to Greece. So those are the few outgoings that I will certainly mention in this particular video but a lot of people were mentioning the fact that we still have Carl Jenkinson on our books. I don't see him being able to contribute within the first team. Of course we've recently bought in Lichtenstein as mentioned earlier on in the video and I can't see him getting into the first team. He's on an extremely extremely high wage based on the calibre of player that he is. I can't see the club being able to shake him off. I believe Carl Jenkinson will be sitting pretty waiting for his contract to run down or what might happen with him really would be he might find himself going out on loan in the championship but I'd like to think that the club are trying to shop him around. It's probably down to the player really that he is refusing to leave uh, based on certain offers that would have been put in place. We've also seen Danny Welbeck retain his, uh, his job at Arsenal, if you want to say that. Uh, a lot of rumours were linking him with a number of clubs throughout the whole summer, but he's retained his, uh, his job at the Arsenal. He will be continuing as part of the squad. He's only re uh, recently returned to training. So that's one other player that I believe should have left. Uh, he's on high wages, basically, and that's my personal reason. And uh, in terms of the type of player that he is, we're not getting a lot out of him. Of course, last season he contributed heavily. He is quite versatile as well. He can play out wide you can play him up top uh, but I do believe the club should have shifted him or maybe you know I am see something in him I don't know but he will certainly be able to add some form of a contribution to the first team so as usual guys please do let me know what you think in the comments below if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel please do make sure that you do hit that subscribe button so once again guys it's your boy TC from I'm gonna talk TV and I'm out